Good afternoon, myself Dr. Ruchi Gupta, Associate Professor, IT Department. Today we will discuss Software Development Lifecycle, SDLC. As I have already discussed in my previous lecture, Software Engineering Concept and Definition. So now uh, we have seen that uh, how we can develop a software by using a systematic approach. So, uh, software development life cycle, it is a life cycle, it is a systematic approach to facilitate the development of large software product in a systematic well defined manner. So, it is a systematic approach that through which we can develop a software in a well defined and cost effective way. So, uh, or we can say that SDLC, it is a series of phases. We use number of phases like uh, uh, software analysis, design, coding, testing, maintenance. So, it is a series of phases and uh, all the phases are interfaced with each other. So, an information is passing from one phase to another phase or we can say the output of the first phase it become the input for the next phase. So, there is a link between one, uh, between two phases of SDLC. So, an information system goes through a series of phases from conception to the implementation. The process is called, so that process is called, uh, called SDLC. So, various reasons for using SDLC model is uh, number one, it helps to understand the whole entire process of the implementation that how we can develop the software and what documentation are required for the implementation of any project. So, first of all, it helps to understand the entire process that in enforce the structured approach of the development. We have to create a systematic structured approach for the implementation of any software. And third one, it is also ensure that the software will deliver on time on budget, on budget because we have to plan in the very initial phase. We have to make a planning of the software implementation at the very initial phase. So, planning is about the time, planning is about the cost, planning is about the resources. So, we have to plan everything in advance. In, it enables subsequent control of them because all the phases are linked with each other. So, we have a control because until we have to complete the first phase, we never insert into the next phase. So, we have a control of, uh, of uh, all the phases and it management and we can easily track the system. We can easily track the system in the SDLC. Now, uh, SDLC, it encompasses all the activities from initial phase until end of the work. So, we have, we can uh, take the feedback or we can uh, uh, track the system, whole system from the very first phase or the very initial phase to the end of the phase of SDLC. It is a formal process. It is very formal process. It is very systematic approach. It is a sequential approach of the software implementation. So, a formal process of software de development, it describes that phases of the development process and it gives the guidelines for how to carry out of these phases. So, generally there are certain phases of uh, SDLC, one is the requirement gathering analysis, second is the software designing, then implementation or coding, then testing phase and the final one is the maintenance phase. So, these are the various phases of SDLC which we have covered in SDLC software development life cycle process. So, the, this is, these are the phases as we have discussed and these are the outcomes of all these phases. So, once we have to complete the one phase, we, we get some output and that output will be used as a input in the, for the next phase. Again, we have to complete the next phase. And again, we have got some uh, output and this uh, output will be used as an input in the third phase. So, similarly, we have to 
use all the output in the next phases and that's why it is a sequential activity that's why we can say it is a sequential approach of the development of any software so each of the company company use the concept of sdlc so the first phase of sdlc is a requirement analysis and specification of uh, the requirement so in this phase we have to gather the requirement from the customer or other stakeholders of the company and we have to analyze these requirement we have to scrutinize these requirement then we have to review these requirements which we have discussed uh, in later and after scrutinize or review the whole requirements we have to prepare a one document that is written in the natural language and uh, that document is called SRS that is software requirement specification it is a legal document between the customer and the developer so once this legal document is to be signed by the both parties no now no one can deny now the software is now actually go on actual implementation phase that is designing phase now in the designing phase we have to create the architecture structure of the software we have to divide the whole software into the number of modules in the design phase basically there are two type of design one is a architectural design and another one is a low level design so in the architectural design we have to create the whole structure of the software we have decompose the software into the number of components and in the low level design we have to give uh, we have to define the inner working of the modules then uh, again we have to prepare a document and that document is called sdd software design document now we come on the integration and system uh, sorry coding and unit testing this is the third phase of sdlc so in coding and unit testing we have to uh, the document which we have received from the design phase that is a design document we have to use that document and we have to go for coding part so we have to implement the code and the outcome and we have to implement the each and every module separately and this is the responsibility of the developer for the unit testing so the developer who is responsible for the implementation of any module they are only responsible for the code, uh, testing of that particular module so this that's why the unit testing come under coding and once the coding is complete we again we get some output from this coding phase and this is called code listing and unit test reports so now the whole system is to be implemented the in in the form of modules now the next step is integration testing and system testing so in this integration testing and system testing we have to integrate whole modules which are already tested in the uh, with the help of unit testing in the coding phase now we have to integrate all the modules and again test the complete uh, software once the all uh, modules are to be integrated with the help of uh, two testing approach there are basically two integration testing methods are available one is a top down approach and another one is a bottom up approach so once we have to integrate all the modules and we have to apply the system testing system testing is about the hardware as well as software testing so once we have to complete the whole testing all these uh, basically we have to discuss all these phases in detail in the uh, in the whole syllabus so once we have to perform this integration and system testing so we get an uh, some output after this phase that is uh, in term in terms of test cases and test reports we have to generate the test reports after the integration and testing phase now your system is ready for deploy now you are ready for deploy your software to the customer once the software is deployed to the customer it will go on to the maintenance phase so till the time till the time the customer will use this software it will remain in the maintenance phase so it will remain stay in the maintenance phase 
So, uh, in the maintenance phase, we have continuously upgrade our system or modify our software. So, the outcome of this uh, maintenance phase is the revised versions and the reports. So, this is the whole process of the SDLC phase and their outcomes. So, basically these are five phases, software analysis and designing, uh, sorry, soft requirement analysis and specification, then designing, then coding and unit testing, then integration and system testing and the final one is the maintenance. So, this is the overall description about all these phases which I have already uh, discussed with you. First is the requirement uh, gathering and analysis. So, in this phase we have to decide what the system is supposed to do, what we want to implement. So, as per the uh, problem statement we have to collect the requirement in this phase and we have do not think about how the system will perform. We are not do not we, we are not worry about the system technical uh, jargons. We have just described that what the system will do after implementation. We have to prepare a user manual in terms of SRS in this phase and this is your uh, this is the outcome of this phase that is requirement specification, software requirement specification document that is SRS. Now, once we have to complete this uh, first phase of SDLC, then only we have to go or move further into the next phase of SDLC that is software design phase. Now, in this uh, design phase, we have to plan that how we can implement the software. Means we have to, as I have discussed that we have to create the structure of the software in terms of uh, architectural design or top level, uh, low level design. We have to discover the structure underlying problem to be solved. Uh, as I have discussed that we have used two approaches structure design and detail design. Detail design is a uh, low level design, structure design a architectural design and in this uh, designing we have to define give the description of uh, classes and methods and the relationship am among all the classes. And once we have to create these class diagrams, then we have to go on to the coding phase and directly we have to give the definition of these classes, which we have already described in the design phase. And the outcome of this design phase is a software design document. Now, once we have to complete the designing, now we have to move further into the next phase of SDLC that is implementation or coding phase. So, coding and unit testing both are uh, in the same phase, Will it will remain in the same phase. So, in this uh, phase, we have to write and implement the code. If we are a programmer, if we know any programming language, then we can easily implement the code. Then code implements classes and methods, which is already discovered in the design. We have just give the definition of these classes which we have we already described in the design phase and the outcome of these phases code listing and unit testing reports. Now, once we have to code or implement the whole project, then we will move further to the testing phase and the final validation has been done in this phase only. The, we use various strategies for the testing. The first is a unit testing which we have already done in the coding phase and now in the testing we have to done integration testing and system testing. In the integration testing we have to integrate all the modules which we have already tested individually or independently in the through the unit testing process. Now, that after that we have to perform the system testing that is also divided into three parts alpha, beta and acceptance testing. Alpha testing is done on the developer side, beta te testing is done on the uh, customer side, acceptance testing has been done when uh, alpha and beta sorry alpha and beta testing has been developer done on the developer side and acceptance testing has been done on the customer side. 
So, the output of these testing is the test cases and test reports. Now, finally, once we have to completely verify or validate our project, then the software is ready for the deployment. It is ready for deliver. So, when we have to uh, deliver the software to the customer, it will go on to the maintenance phase. So, this is our maintenance phase. In this, we have to install the software on the customer side. Users uh, use the program for intended purpose. And we use the different uh, maintenance approach in this maintenance, corrective approach, perfective approach or adaptive approach. And all these approaches we have discussed in the maintenance phase separately. And the output of this uh, uh, maintenance phase is the revised version and reports. So, this is the overall uh, process of SDLC. Uh, now, what is software process and how we can use this SDLC for the implementation of any project. So, uh, process is basically it is a set of activity whose goal is the development or evolution of the software. So, as I have already discussed in the previous lecture that they are basically two category of software. One is a generic software, another one is a customized software. So, uh, either we have to use any of the software, we use the uh, similar activities like specification, development, validation and evolution of software. So, in the specification, what the system should do? and its development constant. In the development, we have to completely implement the software. In the validation phase, we have to check that software is correctly run as per the customer expectation or not. And evolution means changing the software, means we can say it is a maintenance phase in response to changing demands. Now, uh, we have discussed the various generic software process models in details. So, the first model is uh, waterfall model. Uh, waterfall model, it, it is very simple model of the software development. Uh, we have discussed various models for the software development like waterfall model, prototype, spiral, iterative enhancement, rapid application and evolutionary process model. So, first of all, we have discussed about the waterfall model. It is very simple model, very common method for the uh, development of any software. So, this is most common and classic model of uh, life cycle model that also called uh, linear sequential model. It is very simple to understand and use. In the waterfall model, we have used the uh, same phase as we have used in SDLC like uh, analysis, design, coding, testing and maintenance. The least flexible and most obsolete of this cycle model, it is well suited that how low risk in the area of user interface and the program requirement and but it high risk in the budget and schedule. So, generally we have to use this waterfall model only when we have already clear all the requirements. If we have some unclear requirements in that case, we will never use this waterfall model. This is the same classical waterfall model as we have seen in the SDLC, requirement analysis, design, coding, testing and maintenance. So, waterfall model, model phases, uh, the, these are five phases of uh, this uh, waterfall model, which I have already discussed in detail in SDLC model, in SDLC phases. Now, what are the advantages of this waterfall model? Uh, why we have to use this model. So, it is a very simple model. It is a linear model. It is a segmentation model. All the work has been divided into the number of segment and the most important part why we have to call it a waterfall model because it uh, the activities are in sequence. All the activities are in sequence, sequential model. That is why we have to call it waterfall. Because the output of the first phase become the input for the next phase. Similarly, the output for the second phase become the input for the next third phase. It is a systematic and sequential model. It is very simple and it has a proper documentation. 
Now, if we are talking about the disadvantage of this uh, model, so it is uh, very difficult to define all the requirements at the very beginning of the project because the major disadvantage of this project uh, model is that uh, we have to freeze all the requirements at the very initial phase that is at the analysis phase. So, once we have to complete the analysis, now no one can change the requirement. So, suppose if there is requirement is missing or if any requirement is unclear, so the whole software will uh, implement uh, on the basis of these unclear or missing requirements and we not, we never change, we can't change because the requirements are freeze, freeze. So, it is not suitable for accommodating any changes, it is not scale up for very large projects. So, that is why we are not used this project for the large project because in the large projects the requirements are changed very frequently. It is inflexible partitioning of the project into a distinct stages. So, this model is only appropriate when the requirements are well defined, well understood and change will be fairly limited during the design before the design phase. So, we have only used this model when we have a clear requirement. Until we have a clear requirement, we never use this model. So, we have to consider this point in our mind that we have only used this model when we have a clear requirements. So, very few business system have a stable requirements. So, the waterfall model is mostly used for the large system engineering uh, problems whereas a system is developed at, at the several sites. So, we have used this model only when we have clear or uh, correct requirements. Now, iterative waterfall model because there is some limitation with the waterfall model that we cannot change the requirement and we uh, if any error is propagate, so the complete system will be destroyed. So, we have modified this waterfall model and we have to make a version of this model that is called iterative waterfall model. So, this is same as waterfall model only the difference is that we have taken a feedback at each and every phase so that the modification can be easy. So, waterfall model assume that it is designing that no error will occur during this design phase. Iterative waterfall model, it introduces the feedback at the very initial phase for each process. So, we have to take the feedback at each and every phases so that we can easily identify the error and once we have to go on to the maintenance phase, we can just go on to that phase and we have to modify so that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, easily the, uh, uh, pro improve the time or budget also. It is still preferred to detect the errors at the same phase and conduct the review at each of every milestone. So, as we have seen here, we have take the feedback from the user at each and every phase of SDLC. But the concept will remain same. The waterfall model is a iterative waterfall model, but the only difference between waterfall and uh, iterative waterfall model is that in the waterfall model, we uh, requirements are freeze and we are not, uh, even we are not taking any feedback in the middle of the uh, development process. We have just take the feedback at the very end, at the very last phase. So, it uh, consume time as well as cost, but in this case, we have to take the feedback from the user. So, once we go to the maintenance phase, we if we have to identify that error is in the design phase, then directly we go on to the design phase. If we found that error in the coding phase, we just go on to that uh, coding phase. We, we do not require for backtrack the whole system. So, this is a, a complete uh, process of this uh, uh, software development uh, of waterfall model. So, thank you very much.